Well, this video is a continuation. Uh, so the other day we um, worked in GIMP and we made this 2D image for a street sign. Let's make a 3D sign. We're gonna do two different things here. So let me go ahead and just open up Blender. And uh, just so you know, I've been trying out different screen recording software. So hopefully this is recording okay. Some of the programs seem to be causing some flickering. I've tried changing some settings uh, in my video settings, but uh, if there's flickering a little bit at parts of this video, I apologize. Anyway, I'm gonna delete the default cube. And uh, so there's a few things we can do here. If I go up to file, I can go up to user preferences. I can go to add-ons, which I'm in right here, and I can type in plane. And you can see there's an import images as plane, which is a great plugin. I use this all the time. And uh, so once you have that checked, you go back to the 3D view and you can type in, you hit spacebar over your 3D view, type in plane, and you can see you have just add a plane or import images as plane. I'm gonna choose that and I'm gonna go to my temp folder. And in here I have the image we made in GIMP right here. So I'm going to open that. There's some options here. Uh, let's go ahead and um, set the uh, Z transparency here and use alpha and I'm gonna go pre-multiply and I'm gonna say import, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, now again, the image we made originally here is very low resolution, 336 by 336. So, uh, you know, you may wanna make this bigger, but let me go ahead and hit F12 here and there you can see we have a sign because I exported it as a PNG with a transparent background. So now I can go here and I can go uh, rotate x90 so it's I rotate 90 degrees on the x-axis and um, let me move my camera here so I'm gonna hit uh, control alt 0 to bring my camera to the current view again I can hit f12 it looks black now that's because of the where the light source is we can move our light source hit f12 again there is our street sign so I can now scale this up and if I go into a uh, textured mode, you can see the image there. And now I can add in a cube mesh and I can scale that way, 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 way down. Go back to front view and I can scale it on the Z axis. Scale it up a little bit this way. That's actually probably way bigger than I need. Let's see, that's a pretty tall sign there. Move it back if I do uh, in textured mode, I can't see that flat plane. If I hit Z to go into wireframe mode, I can see where that plane is. And on the side view, I can easily uh, line it up here, as long as it's not coming through. And there we have a street sign, and we can uh, parent them or even make them one object. But I'm gonna select one, then the other, and then I'm gonna hit Control P and parent object. So now I can move the base of this, and I can grab it on the Z axis and move it up here. Maybe scale it down a little bit. Oh, you know what would be good also? Uh, go into edit mode here and grab this like that. And then again, line this up, grab Z, grab on the Z axis like so. So now when I scale it, it scales appropriately and if I rotate it, it rotates down at that base. So I'm going to move that back down here. And let me just move here. Again, I get the view I want. Control Alt 0 on the number pad. I don't know if I said that earlier. Now I can hit F12. And you can see we have a street sign. I can add in a plane for it to sit on. Ta da! Now, doing it this way, we have to make sure. So this, this is a flat image with a transparent layer, we want to make sure that that uh, shadow cast properly. As you see, when I hit F12 here, you see that square back there? That's because it's rendering a shadow of the, of the entire plane here, even though some of it's transparent. Uh, the way we can do that, and that's one of the drawbacks of doing this method, I'm going to choose the plane where the shadow is going to be cast. I'm going to give it a material and go down to um, shadows. And I'm going to say receive transparent. Now if I hit F12, the shadow looks appropriate. Uh, I can move our light source here. There you go. You can see what it looks like a little better there. And of course, that's very simple. You might want to do a little more work, you know, shaping the post, but that's a very simple street sign here. 
And of course we can go into our world and I like to turn on ambient occlusion, turn it to pre, or not pre-multiply, but multiply environment lighting and hit F12. I think it looks a little bit nicer there. And we can even make our sky, you know, white. F12 looks a little nicer there. And if we want, if we want like that infinite white background, we can again choose this plane, go to its materials and under shadows, um, we can say um, shadows only. If I hit F12 now, now you have that infinite white. We're not really getting that uh, shadow. There's there's tweaks you can do for that, um, but just depending on what you're looking for. Uh, and that is one way to create a street sign. But again, now doing this, any object that the shadow is going to be cast on, you're going to have to make sure that you choose receive transparent on their material. So there is another way you can go about doing this, and that is to actually make a 3D model. Uh, another another drawback to this, I should also mention, is let's say I rotate this uh, 90 degrees, or how about and rotate it Z negative 90 degrees. So now we're kind of looking at the back side of that. If I hit F12, it's the same sign on the back. So this is a quick, easy way to do it, but not necessarily the best. Now, uh, it, and again, it depends. If you're just making a scene, that's going to be off in the distance. This is a quick, easy way to do it. But uh, doing it another way is not much harder. So in the next video, we're actually going to uh, create a sign of that shape. So let's uh, end this video here. I ask, I thank you for watching. I ask you to visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There should be a link in the description. As always, I hope that you have a great day.